FSU fam, what's good? It's your boy, Polk County Noel, back. Uh, man, I've been sick this week. So I was actually going to do a video yesterday. I was going to do this video yesterday. But your boy had like a stomach flu or some type of virus or something. So I was I was at a commission. Um, slow week. It's a bye week, so we don't have a game. Um, the next game is Clemson, so I'll be doing my Clemson um, preview. Uh, next week but today I just want to hit on something that's uh, really been bothering me and it's one of the reasons why I started doing this in the first place and that's this negativity on uh it's not even from the fan base like with any fan base you're gonna have good and bad fans it's just you're gonna have fans that are overly negative and are quiet when things are going good and then you're going to have fans that are just you know overly positive right so with any fan you got the yin and the yang um but it's the people that cover the team that i, I, I have a real problem with is these podcasts that i used to listen to i've had to stop listening to them you guys probably have if you are a florida state fan and you listen to podcasts and stuff like that you probably know the you know the uh popular ones I'm talking about, like the Noel Cast and, and Wake Up War Chant. These guys, man, after we winning two games straight and having really a lot of things, I think, positive things to build on, these guys have done nothing but focus on the negativity. And I got to believe it has something to do with Willie Taggart. I believe they have something against this dude. We can talk about whether it's because he's black or what. Hey, you can drop your comments if you, whether you want to go that route or not. But the fact is, after two games where this defense has been completely revamped for the most part, they've done nothing but want to focus on, like, it's, 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 it's gone so low they, they're doing more articles and more clickbait on a guy that's not even at this program anymore. Name Landon Dickerson, offensive lineman, decided to transfer to Alabama. The kid couldn't stay healthy for a whole year the whole time he was at this school. He goes to Alabama and all of a sudden he's healthy and is playing, you know, Alabama saying that's the best offensive lineman. And that's good. Congratulations to that kid. You wish nothing but the best for him. But that tells me that that kid probably had quit on this team a while ago and just simply didn't want to be here. So he was hurt all the time. Or maybe he was really hurt and he's just having a, a it's finally his first good full season. That's fine. That's fine too. But the fact that the FSU media has decided we're going to cover more of Landon Dickerson and how Willie Taggart and his staff dropped the ball on Landon Dickerson. Instead of, let's ha so how about we talk about the fact that a guy like Amari Gaynor has emerged almost out of nowhere to be a, 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 a pass rushing force off the edge with his, the way he played last week and the week before. Or how about we talk about the fact that Janaj Robinson, who's going to be unfairly suspended for the first half of that Clemson game, has come along and has been another dominant force on the edge. Why don't we talk about some of the positive things to build on? Hell, I'd rather you talk about a quarterback controversy between Horny Book and Blackman. But no, you'd rather talk about a kid that's not at the school and how the staff has failed on the offensive line. Well, last time I checked, everybody on that offensive line, with the exception of the one kid named Donta Lucas, is a Jumbo Fisher recruit. So the unfairness to Willie Taggart is getting ridiculous because last time I checked, something I, I, I read was how Willie Taggart needs and this staff, they must get top all offensive line recruits. Nick, like there's no exception. They need top O line recruits. And that's fine. We need help on the offensive line. And I'm not saying we don't. But the last time I checked, what top offensive line recruits did Jimbo Fisher ever get at Florida State? Landon Dickerson was the best offensive line recruit they had ever signed. That kid didn't pan out, and he ended up transferring. 
what top offensive line recruit did Florida State ever get? As a matter of fact, I'll take it a step further. The best offensive line in Jimbo, the best offensive line men in Jimbo Fisher's tenure, you could argue between maybe one, two, or three guys. Cam Irvin, two star D tackle. They ended up moving him. So he wasn't no five star or high four star. Um, Brian Stork, two star tight end. Yeah, they moved him to center. So it's not like he was a highly recruited offensive lineman. And probably Trey Jackson. I think Trey Jackson was like a two or three star offensive guard. They, no time in Jimbo Fisher's tenure that they go out there and get these, these, these big time offensive line recruits. What they did was scout it, figured out who would fit what they wanted to run and develop guys. That's just what they did. But for some reason, Willie Taggart isn't being held to that standard. For some reason, Willie Taggart has to go out and get five-star guys off the bat because that's the FSU standard. Since when has that been the FSU standard? How about we let Willie build what he's building because the offensive lineman that he's recruited so far, again, Dante Lucas, it's probably been the uh, outside of the transfer which you can credit to Willie Taggart as well. Outside of the uh, Roberts, the transfer from Northern Illinois, I would say Dante Lucas has been the most consistent offensive lineman as a true freshman. And that's a Willie Taggart guy. Guess what? Bavion, Arnold, um, Minshew, who we haven't even, probably won't see again at this. He probably won't ever play again. Juwan, all those Juwan, Bella, all those other guys on that offensive line, guess who they are? They are Jimbo Fisher's leftovers. How about we have some, some patience and how about we hold Willie Taggart to the same standard people were holding Jimbo Fisher to and stop trying to make, try, stop trying to make it seem like he has to go out here and do, pull some damn miracles. And how about we stop talking about a kid that's not even at the school no more. How about we talk about the guys that we have at the school and what they're doing to improve and the fact that this team may have turned the corner after two games. And I'm not saying NC State or Louisville are these offensive juggernauts. But neither was Louisiana Monroe, and you saw what that defense looked like against that team. So obviously this team has improved, and obviously this team has turned the corner. And instead of us talking about, well, I don't know, how about the best, one of, how about one of the 10 best players in all of college football, Marvin Wilson? Why aren't we doing constant articles and clicks about him instead of talking about Landon Dickerson? Or how Willie Taggart has failed on the offensive line after only two years. We have 90% of the guys that are starting on this team aren't even Willie Taggart recruits. Yet somehow we're saying Willie Taggart has failed after two years. Now don't get me wrong. I've been hard on Willie Taggart on certain occasions as well. I, there's a lot of things I feel like this team needs to do and improve on. But there's no way after really not even two years... One year, and we're going into his second. He hasn't had two full seasons yet. And people are jumping off the boat, which is your right. You can jump off the bandwagon all you want. Hell, we don't want people on the bandwagon anyway. You need to be diehards if you're going to be riding with us. So you can jump off if you want to. But the fact that people are ready to, to, to ask for this guy to be fired or saying this guy has failed already is, is a bit ridiculous. Lest we forget that Jimbo Fisher in his first couple years were used, was losing to teams like Wake Forest or getting blown out by Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? But, again, it's unfair. The, the FSU media is, is, is a bit it, – again, it's one of the reasons why I started what I'm doing. It's ridiculous. And it's not right – to sit here and, and, and crit overly criticize the guy after two wins. If you want to pile on a guy after he's losing to Boise, after giving up a big lead, or he's losing to Virginia after giving up a lead, or he's going down to the wire and losing to a Louisiana Monroe by a lucky missed field goal, if you want to bash on the guy or bash on that team over those games, fine. I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and be mad at that. Like, I get it. I was pissed off at all those games as well. But what you're not, what I'm not going to sit by and let happen is guys won two games in a row where the team has looked drastically different than the first three games, and yet we're going to sit here and still have negative articles and still put out negative things instead of talking about the fact that Marvin Wilson's playing at a rate 
They're better than anyone in the nation. The fact that Amari Gaynor's came on out of nowhere to be consistent or seems to be a consistent pass rusher. The fact that some of the freshmen in the secondary scene have graded out pretty high and maybe they can turn the corner. Though they didn't catch the interceptions, the fact is they were defending the pass better that game than they had defended it at all so far this year. We're not talking about any of that. Or we're not even talking about the fact that Cam Akers is what leading the leading the country in yards after contact. Like we're not talking about any of those good things that this team is doing and the fact that they may be turning a corner going into a Clemson game where they should have a boatload of confidence after two wins. The fact that Clemson just went to the wire with North Carolina. So you have to believe there are things we can do in that game similar to what North Carolina did to make that game close and competitive. Yet we're going to sit here and we're going to continue to do, or they're going to continue, because I'm not going to put myself in that category. We aren't doing anything. These guys that get paid to cover this team, the guys that should be overly I'm not going to say overly positive, but they should be invigorating the fan base and giving them something to look forward to. Instead, they just want to keep tearing down this coach. It's not a coincidence that they're tearing this coach down. Like, that's what they're doing. Oh, and I, and I listen to these guys, and they, they, act like, they, they act like Clemson might be the greatest football team ever. It's like, it's ridiculous the way they act about Clemson and how they might be the greatest football team ever assembled. Like, get out of here. They, what they're doing is it's embarrassing. I don't know if if you go listen to a damn Miami podcast, I bet you they're not doing the same things that these guys are doing. But I'm here to try to right the wrongs. So if you want to hear some some positivity, man, tune into what I'm doing. This was just a little short video to sort of get that off my chest because that that is something that is really irking me. Um, I'll try to get one more video out this week probably because I do want to co cover the defense and what's changed and what's what's going right. But this one, I wanted to get off my chest because instead of having a bunch of positivity off of t a two straight wins, I'm looking and all I'm seeing is a bunch of well, they dropped the ball on Landon. Landon's playing so well. We were right about Dickerson. Like, who cares if you were right about that guy? That guy's not here anymore. Why are we continuously making articles about a kid that doesn't play at this school anymore? Why? Because the offensive line needed help, but we knew the offensive line needed help We're going into the season. Oh, last time I checked, the offensive line wasn't good when that kid was playing. So we got to stop it. Uh, that's it, man. Holt County No Man signing out. I got more stuff coming this week. Uh, Y'all have a good day if you want to.